Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be part two um, to my dippers of the Peak District. Um, and you'll see just in the background he's lurking. I'm back out with Mark. <laughs> I'm back out with Mark. Mark's doing something very different today. Um, so he's left his long lens back in the car, or back at home actually, um, and he's got a um, small lens out with him. So he's going to be shooting wide, uh, wildlife. He's going to be shooting landscape photographs today um, and making the most of some of the fantastic technology that is available on the OM Systems camera. Um, which he uses. So he's using, um, it, it creates the effect of having an ND filter onto your lens. So you can get long exposure photographs handheld, because I would have to be using a tripod with an ND filter to achieve that, but you can get long exposure photographs. So he's, he's looking at capturing that movement within the water. I, of course, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I've got my um, Z9, or Popsy Z9, with a 180 to 600. Um, and I'm going to be looking for the wildlife that's on offer. Now, um, there is a good chance that we can get a um, water vole here. It is a location of water vole, although I think that's probably going to be a slim chance, if I'm honest. Um, and I'm also, obviously, as the title would suggest, looking for dipper and any other wildlife um, that I might find along the way. This is going to be a different type of photography uh, out in today. We're not going to set locations where we know the dipper are going to be. It's going to be an amble camera on your hip taking opportunity shots every time that we see them. So come along for the journey and see what I see. So no sooner had I finished that piece of camera I was just admiring some fungus on a log that uh, Mark was leaning on to do one of his long exposure shots when Mark shouted there was a dipper and we looked upstream and there was a dipper on a lovely moss covered uh, branch from a fallen tree out on the water. Now there was um, some foliage that I had to shoot through to get the photograph but that meant I've got some lovely bl blurred elements in the foreground and some foreground interest with the colour of the green leaves that are on that tree um, with the with the unobstructed view of the dipper on the branch behind it. So if I've got anything decent, I'll pop it up on the screen now for you to see. So as you can probably see, I am laid down in a load of nettles and been stung to buggery, but I've got a breeding pair of dipper I would say only 15 meters from the end of my lens and they're really confident there have been a number of dog walkers that have walked past carrying on up the side of the river and they're not phased by in the slightest they've been preening um, stretching their wings out um, one of them hopped into the water just before I lay down and was was washing in the water which was incredible would have made some fantastic photographs and um, so I'm just lay watching them um, there is a branch that's much closer to my left hand side um, that's got the telltale signs of a dipper, the poo, on the log and I'm hoping that they might just move down to that if I stay nice and still but as it stands I'm getting some lovely photographs of, of them at the, at, at the riverbank um, I would say the only kind of downside to that is that you've got quite a busy background um, you know I'm, I'm as low to the water as I can possibly get well, they're just starting to move down a little bit. Um, I'm as low down to the water as I, as I can get. Um, and if they landed on this branch just to the left of me, it will make a fantastic photograph. So I'm probably just gonna shut up and keep watching.
So I found a nest site of, uh, of the breeding pair that I've just been, I was literally stood photographing them and one of them got an absolute beak full of moss um, and I was laying on the ground photographing it and it's flown into the, into the bank probably 15 meters from where I am now. But actually I've come to an area now that's just a little bit further upstream from it and there's areas where I can get down onto the water. Um, so the potential, the potential for photographs here is insane. I'm so excited and I genuinely think, Mark, that you can just see in the distance there, he's regretting not having his telephoto lens with him. Oh, it's back out again. It's back out again. Um, because this is throwing up some absolutely incredible dipper opportunities. Um, dare I say even better than, than the, 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 the last trip we did. The only thing that's kind of spoiling it today, in some ways, is the light. It's a very drab, overcast, drizzly day. Um, but that's forcing me to have those lovely slow shutter speeds when I'm getting capturing the movement of the water in the river. Yeah, special. It is muddy. Just to give you an idea. It's not a place that you come without your wellies on. It yeah. is, well, all walking boots. <laughs> You got this, mate. As hideous as the conditions are, and it is thick with mud, and as you've probably just seen from the video, we've just climbed down a really, really steep uh, side of a, a slope. It was very slippy and treacherous. Treacherous? Put my teeth in, treacherous. Um, we've been treated, we've got a dipper, but again, he's beautifully singing at a lovely location where the river is quite narrow and he's quite happy for us to be on this side of the river crouching down and photographing him just on the other side um, some nice opportunities because it's very dark behind the dipper so again using that highlight metering highlight weighted metering that I explained in the last video we'll potentially get some really nice photographs here beautiful Apologies if the audio is not as good as, as it is on my DJI. I've switched to my um, GoPro now, just with it being quite grim, the weather. Um, it's amazing how moving five, six meters along the bank produces such a different photograph. Um, when I first found this dipper and I came straight, I was almost square onto it. And it was lo a lovely background. It's very dark background, but what we'd got was a little, protruding twig just coming out the back of the dipper um, and that's one of the things that I've, I look for all the time I look around the subject and I'm looking for anything that's a distraction um, and I would say it's club, club photography that's, that's taught me that because judges pick up on things like that so quickly so I'm all, all the time I'm looking and then just by moving sometimes only several footsteps to the left or to the right it completely transforms the image and all those things that were once distractions in the image vanish. Um, so I would always encourage you, take your shots uh, when you find your subjects, because you, you don't know how long they're going to be there. 
if just like this dipper it's confident and it's going to stay in the same location experiment by moving left and right and just see what kind of photographs that gives you i'm going to pop some photographs up on the screen now and i'm hoping that they're going to highlight it for you the difference just a little bit of movement down the down the riverbank has made to photographing this dipper well that was just epic uh, we saw the dipper where we heard it first you could you always hear them you kind of announce their arrival as they call as they're on the wing and it came all the way down the river and it landed just in front of us on on a oh, it's back it's back oh it's oh, mate. Sorry that piece of camera ended so abruptly then. Just as I was recording that piece of camera, he flew back up and landed on probably the best position that he could do right in front of us. Um, so it was vlogging camera down, squat down in the river. I think I actually got my bum in the, in the river that time um, and get the shots. Now what was nice on that shot, um, Mark inspired me really because he had just said that while I was photographing it hunting, on the the log down to the left of me um he was he was doing some long exposure um so i've when it landed on on that rock in front of me then i thought you know what i've got some shots now i've got some behavioral shots which is the shots that i really like um i'm now going to take this opportunity to experiment with a long exposure so i've slowed my shutter speed down to 50th of a second he's back again there to 50th of a second and it was raining at the time so you've got the streaks of the rain you've got the movement in the water as it as it parts around the rock and um, just a really really beautiful scene and um, i only hope that the images look as great as they do on the back of the camera because on the back of the camera they just look mm. so yeah this is this is turning into an absolute epic trip an epic trip and you know again as i was leaving I was chatting to my wife about it. She said, oh, you've, only, you, you've just done a dipper video. You can't do two. But this is a completely different style of photography to the last one. Um, I hope you enjoy it just as much as I'm enjoying it. Because this has been epic. That's pretty spectacular, that. Yeah. So we've reached these stepping stones that go around the side of the cliff and we've decided we're going to turn back here and head back the way we've come and get some opportunities to photograph some more dippers. Um, I'm doing a piece of camera whilst walking over the stepping stones which is probably very foolish. Viewers, do not try this at home. Um, yeah, I, I just think this whole valley has been it's surpassed my expectation. It's been absolutely stunning from start to finish. Oh, ho, ho, nearly. And um, it just seems to get better and better. And I would imagine if you could come here, you know, on a different day with different lighting conditions, it will be completely different again. And um, so it's a place I'll definitely be returning to. Um, but there has been, I can't even, I can't even count how many dipper we've seen. We have seen them everywhere all along this river. So there's a really, really good healthy population of dipper. Um, so I've no doubt come that time of year when the younger fledging, 
there'll be some phenomenal opportunities on here and that's probably when I'll next return. That was just insane. I've never witnessed anything like it. Not sure I ever will witness something like it again. Um, there is obviously a male, another male dipper that's come in and challenged the, the male in this area. And this male has already paired up and there's a breeding pair. So when this other male came in, it absolutely kicked off. They've chased each other up and down this river for, I don't know, maybe, I, it seems like forever, but I'm sure it's a, a really short space of time. But he's now taking his rightful place on the end of the, the log. And I don't know whether you can hear him over the, the, the noise of this river, but he's calling out, he's singing, he's proud of himself. He's cleared off the competition. And he's claiming this patch as his own. What an epic piece of wildlife that was to witness here in the glorious Peak District. So for that dipper, I was using probably what I believe to be one of the most underused aspects on a camera, and that is the flip out camera screen. Um, we all know, and I've said it on this channel time and time again, that the best way to get the best photographs is to get down low to your subject. You wanna be at eye level or lower. And obviously when we're photographing dippers on a river, that really requires you to be right the way down at water level. And there are times when that just isn't possible and that was one of them. So to bring the camera up to my eye and photograph like I would traditionally do so would mean that I was a little bit higher than the subject photographing down. So by using the flip out screen and pointing it upwards towards the sky, I can lower the camera down towards the water and get nice and low, but at the same time, I can use that, that viewfinder so that I'm not breaking my back or getting soaking wet in the river to get the shot and um, so a really really underused piece of the kit most cameras have them and i really encourage you use that flip out screen to get your camera nice and low we've come back to the original spot where we started um, all the way back down the river I'm not even sure if you'll be able to hear this. I had to put my DJI pocket away because it has just been torrential rain. Um, it's eased off a little bit now, but that way at the side of me there is probably drowning out any audio I'm going to get here at all. Um, so that we've located the nest. It's in the wall, um, which is, is to my left here. Further down, we're well out of the way, so we're not causing any disturbance. Um, but this seems to be a really good place to be because we can get that down to water level and the, the dipper are coming up the banking on the, on the right hand side, the far side of the river from where we are and then flying across into the nest site. So uh, just sit tight and wait and see if we can see any of the dipper coming through. Fingers crossed this rain might disappear and the sun might even come out.
So the end of an absolutely incredible day's photography. Um, thanks very much to Mark um, for showing me yet another fantastic location on my doorstep. A guy from Bristol, from Leicester, from Bristol, showing me locations in the Peak District. Only 30 minutes from my front door. It's shameful that I've not been here before. It has been crawling with Dipper. It has been absolutely sensational. We've had opportunity to photograph behaviour that I've not seen before. We've had those dueling males, we've had um, birds bringing nesting material back, back to the nest. It's just been, it's just been one of those days, a red letter day, absolutely first class. And obviously with great company, Mark has been an absolute gent today, um, giving me different ideas, inspiring me to take some photographs that I wouldn't ordinarily take. I, I might have taken a few at long exposure, trying to compete with his OM systems. <laughs> um, I've certainly not achieved what Mark's achieved. And if, you, if you've not uh, yet checked out his, his channel, please go across and have a look at it. Some of the shots that he's taken today, long exposure, handheld, are absolutely sublime, fantastic photographs. You're, make, you're making me blush, Dan. Yeah. You're making me blush. <laughs> well deserved. And to boot, he's even bought me a date slice. Can't be bad, can it? He's treated himself to a, a nice scotch egg. It's wonderful. So, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and a subscribe. If you've not subscribed, it's about time you did. Um, I've been looking at the analytics of the videos. Over half of my viewers have still not subscribed to the channel. So please, it's a click of a button, it costs you nothing to so subscribe to the channel. Have a buy me a coffee webpage, link will be at the bottom now. You know what to do with that guys. If you want to show that little bit of extra support, please feel free to, to go on and to buy me a coffee. Thank you so much to those people who do so. And until next time, ta-ra. Bye.